Hello viewers, welcome to our lecture series on Indian Ethos in Management. This is going to be part 3 of our lectures on management lessons from Kautilya's Arthashastra. In the previous lecture of mine, I gave you a brief background of what Arthashastra has to say about management ideas, about assumptions regarding nature of human beings and uh, we, were, we also discussed about Kautilyan model of humans. Now it's time for us to discuss about Kautilyan theory of motivation. Previously, I told you about the bag in the background, what are the different prevalent theories of motivation in the present literature on management. And getting aligned with that, I would like to uh, bring before you what Cotelia has to say about theory of motivation. So, dry, drawing upon earlier writings, Arthashastra identifies four different methods of motivation popularly called as Sam, Dham, Dand and Bhed. I would be telling you what each one of these methods indicate or signify. As a group, they can be referred to as motivation means. They are regarded as means of motivation and their various combinations are called as means mix. So, we can make use of uh, these methods in combination. At times, you may, be, you may use Sam or Dham. At times, you may use Sam and Dand. At times, you may use Dand and Bhed. So, according to the requirement of the your situation or circumstances, you may use the means mix as per the uh, requirement. Whatever circumstances need, accordingly you can use these methods of motivation. Now, what this, uh, what this SAMA stands for? SAM is basically the persuasion method of motivation, where you persuade a person to do some work. Dhamma is regarded as an incentive system or the reward method of motivation. As the dham indicates about the price, the cost, you can call it as the incentive system or the reward method of motivation. That you give some uh, reward to a person and person would work, person would get motivated to work. So, dhamma is indicating towards the cost or price element of that. Sama is indicating towards the persuasion or motivating a person, persuasion method of motivation. Bhed basically indicates towards the internal competition method of motivation where you are trying to insert or inculcate the internal competition among the employees. One employee is given the task that you are supposed to do it in a better manner as compared to your colleague. So, there is an internal competition which is inculcated and it is regarded as the Bhed or what you call as the secret that you are creating a sense of competition. And the next one is Dand, which is uh, basically indicating towards the punishment method of motivation. It is executed by the use of power or authority or what you call as force. To use the current uh, uh, terminology from management literature, I would say it is indicating towards theory X of motivation given by McGregor. So, this is indicating that you have to use your power, you have to use your authority, you have to become little authoritative to get a specific work done if you are resorting to this method of motivation which is known as Dand or punishment method of motivation or what you call as stick uh, in the theory X of motivation. That if a person is not working properly, punishment may be given to the person and if a person is doing properly, work properly, the reward may be given and reward indicates towards the dhamma or what you call as incentive system. Now, we need to understand the sequencing for the use of the sam, dham, dand and bhed. There is a sequencing uh, provided in the book of Arthashastra. Arthashastra suggests that the sequencing of the use of uh, uh, these stated means called sam, dham, dand, bhed, the first one is the natural method. And natural method is to use the Sama, that is persuasion, and uh, the Dhamma first, which says that naturally if you are being very natural or you are acting in an obvious manner, you can use a combination of Sam and Dham, that is persuasion and incentive. So, you persuade a person, give some incentive to the person and the person would get motivated to work. So, at the very outset, we should apply this natural method as far as Cotillia's method of motivation is concerned. Cotillia says we should follow a combination of Sam and Dham at the very outset. And if uh, it does not work, you can create internal competition 
you can also resort to the bhed that is creating internal competition but it is at the next level not at the very outset and after that the use of force uh, comes at at the very end that if nothing else works you have to become little authoritative you have to create or insert that fear factor among your employees to get your work done so the sequencing of the use of means is provided in the book cotelia where uh, uh, cotelia says that uh, we need to first follow the natural method that is sam and dam if that doesn't work you can enter into the bhed and eventually if nothing else works you have to use the force the power or become little authoritative to get your work done so arthashastra is giving us a suggestion that the different situations require different types of motivation means mix so you have to design you have to customize your uh, method uh, component while giving solution to a different situation so according to the situation you have to uh, keep on changing the motivation means mix the one method cannot work in all situations you cannot apply the one size fit all approach here you have to customize your solution if you really wish to motivate your employees in a proper manner so use of motivation mix is also related to the dominance of particular aspects in human nature here comes that which aspect of uh, human nature is dominant in a in 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 my employee if i am dealing with one of my employee and the employee is not willing to work i need to first understand which nature is dominant in the in the very nature of my employee to whom i am willing to motivate so the personality type and means of motivations they are supposed to be understood here we need to first understand the typology of individuals what is the typology of individual and accordingly we should uh, enter into the preferred means of motivation so let us uh, discuss about uh, the assumptions uh, of human being regarding their nature that in what segment they are coming i had already discussed about three different segments of uh, individuals which is regarded as typology of individuals and what is what should be our preferred means of motivation i'm going to tell here the first one is good type that is human in good self a person who is self motivated the person who is having prominence of good type which which means positive attitude so here comes the role of persuasion and incentive that is sam and dam cotelia says that we can we should use if a person is classified under the first segment that is good type uh, men or good type human being you need to persuade them you need to offer them some incentive and they will stay motivated to work the second category is work shirker type if your employer subordinates they are you find the traits of uh, work shirker in your employees you need to create internal competition which means you have to add you have to include bhed into your strategy so other other tools are getting added sam and dam they remain the same but we are inculcating we are including bhed into our strategy into into our kitty to motivate that person that employee who is having work shirker type the third one is corruptible type that is uh, greed if the employer subordinate is classified under third category you have to of course use uh, the force that is called dand so the force is supposed to be used here if a human being is classified under the third segment that is corruptible type or what you call as greed so my dear learners cotelia has very eloquently uh, given this uh, classification of typology of individuals and based on that we can decide we can craft or design preferred means of motivation so there is a combination of sam dam then sam dam and bhed and eventually if nothing else works the dand or the force is supposed to be used you have to make use of stick to employ, to motivate your employee to get your work done now coming to the personality types and means of motivation so according to the personality type we may decide the means of motivation in many organizations there is greater reliance on bhed and dand systems rather than persuasion and incentive in in most of the organizations you would find that they don't believe into persuading employees or giving them incentive they feel that we need to create internal competition and inculcate the fear factor use authority to get your work done 
so the current researchers uh, researchers in social sciences they are rediscovering the importance of this this very approach which is called as sam approach where we can be very polite with our subordinates we can motivate them by persuading and uh, and we can get our work done in a very uh, polite manner in a very congenial atmosphere where the employees employees are not at all feeling stressed so in the recent management terminology this sama approach goes by different names uh, and uh, just like theory why if i take the theory of motivation given by the macgregor now moving ahead to the expression to different approaches uh, it may be indicated here it may be noted here that the sama approach finds its expression in the human relationship approach to life so there is a an approach called human relationship approach to life so if we are resorting to uh, this sama approach or persuasion approach to motivate your employee you are resorting to human relationship approach uh, to towards life and if you are following the second approach that is dam approach or uh, incentive approach uh, it means it is the economic approach to motivation you are resorting to economic approach to motivation if you are following bheda or what you call as in inculcating or including internal competition you are basically uh, using the political power approach to motivation and the last one is dand that is uh, the punishment it is the brute force approach to motivation so if i have to summarize my dear learners regarding expression to different approaches of motivation i would say that cotelia provides us four approaches to motivation the first one is human relationship approach then it goes to economic approach third one is political power approach and last one is brute force approach to motivation so these are four different approaches to motivation provided by the kotelya in his book arthashastra and according to your requirement according to the circumstances of your business of your subordinates of your employees you can make good use of these approaches from time to time if the situation requires only human relationship approach what is the need of becoming brute to your employees what is the use of uh, using the brute force approach to motivation and my dear learners nowadays employees are being regarded as part of the business family part of that family where we are working together so what is the point of uh, using dand or what is the point of using bhed why to do politics into the business organization when without politics and brute forces you can get your work done with human relationship and economic approach by simply giving adequate incentive to your employees you can get your work done so these expressions to different approaches of motivation they are really rare in the in the western philosophy and this is the point where we are having some upper hand in terms of uh, understanding the human psychology the human behavior once we are dealing with the human the sources we consider humans as capital so why not honor them why to punish them why to use political power approach to to motivate them when we have economic approach and human relationship approach in hand so management competencies and excellence in men in is is another aspect uh, of uh, human resource management when we talk about uh, the kotelya's arthashastra so management competencies and excellence in men whenever this term comes there is a question in front of managers administrators and advisors are there any competencies needed for uh, administrators managers and advisors do we need any competency for these administrators managers and advisors of course the answer is supposed to be positive we need to accept it that yes we do need competencies for administrators managers and advisors so arthashastra is is helping us here it identifies quite a few of them and it suggests that these competencies must be tested before assigning the critical role and responsibilities to a manager if you are appointing an, an an administrator if you are appointing a manager if you have you are going to have an advisor you have to first do their competency mapping we need to first uh, understand or test their uh, critical response their 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 competencies before assigning those responsibilities which are critical to the success of business enterprise so these competencies uh, they they play you know great uh, stress 
on building uh, uh, organizational cohesiveness or what you call as organizational excellence and arthashastra places greater emphasis on building competencies that we need to build competencies among our employees in fact the very first chapter of kautilya's arthashastra is titled as concerning the topic of training concerning the topic of training is the first very chapter which actually speaks volumes about the trainability of a person if you are if you are appointing a person as uh, uh, as your subordinate or as your leader even then you need to first ask a question wh- whether the person has those requisite competencies or not and if it is not present there do you think that such an employee is trainable can you train that employee that is another important aspect of uh, management when we study the book of arthashastra authored by kautilya so it emphasizes the twin qualities of the skill in action and quest for perfection these two uh, qualities are equally important and here the the arthashastra emphasizes the twin qualities of the skill in action and quest for perfection and these would be achieved by a continual emphasis on human advancement renewal and improvement and my dear learners the competencies uh, are supposed to be tested before appointing a person you should not blame an employee after recruiting that you don't even know this you don't even have this basic knowledge you don't even have this very skill so before appointing a person to a specific job or role or responsibility it is our duty to examine to do their competency mapping and here comes the role of chanakya's uh, arthashastra or kautilya's arthashastra which is giving us the list of competencies which are to be tested before recruiting a person the first one is you have to uh, you have to test the person's training in position of uh, the eye of science through the uh, learned in the same sciences so technical competence must be tested the first step is you need to test the person's technical competence the second one is you need to test intelligence perseverance and dexterity of an employee that what is the level of intelligence perseverance and dexterity in that employee to whom i am going to recruit the next one is you have to test eloquence boldness and presence of mind in your employee and not only the requirement they are giving they are also telling us the way out kautilya's arthashastra is giving us the way out as well that if you wish to conduct these tests how to do it how to conduct these kind of test how to identify that presence of competency in a specific employee or in a group of employees the next one is you have to test uprightness friendliness and firmness of uh, devotion in dealing with others to what extent a person is straight forward how friendly an employee is what is the extent of firmness of devotion you are finding in your workforce while dealing with others that is another competency which is needed to perform day to day operations the next one is amiability and absence of disposition of animosity this is another important aspect if this competency is there there is no point conducting a workshop for managing with the stress you don't require any workshop you don't require any training for stress management if you have tested your employees competency with regard to amiability and absence of disposition of animosity the next one is you have to test the strength of character this is another important uh, uh, competency which we need to test if if we believe the chanakya style to the kautilya style of management and these important competencies are broadly classified like this we classify them like the first one is technical or professional competence the second one is decision making competence specifically in in emergent situations when whenever there is an emergency in your business organization how to uh, deal with that situation what is uh, your promptness in decision making when it comes to some emergent situations the third one is communication competence what is the the, the what is the level of uh, this ability of communicating with others communicating to the workforce communicating to the society 
communicating to all the stakeholders this is another competence what we need the next one is behavioral competence as reflected in the dealings with others and uh, eventually the character competence so if i have to classify these competencies they can be grouped in these uh, five six categories where we talk about technical or professional competence decision making competence communication behavioral and character competence so cotillian competency and method of testing is also with us cotillia provides us the methodology to test these competencies suppose if i take example of technical or professional competence how to test it test it so cotillia says that you have to use a subject expert for it so whatever is your area whatever is your subject you need to call subject expert for that in order to understand whether the specific technical or professional competence is present there in that employee or not whether the employee is aware of those uh, skill sets or not whether the employee possesses those skill sets or not for that the methodology should be methodology of testing should be you you need to call the subject experts for that so they need to uh, give us the report that yes the person is technically sound the next one is intelligence what you call as perseverance and dexterity intelligence perseverance and dexterity for this we can do we can uh, test it by the way of direct observation in handling of assignments you can give some assignment to an employee and draw your inference that yes my employee is having that capability of uh, perseverance and dexterity employee is having that presence of mind and can handle those tough situations or assignments the next one is uh, if you have to uh, evaluate if you have to test the uh, competence of eloquence boldness and presence of mind again the direct observation on various uh, uh, occasions or what you call as circumstances of conversations and assignments that i have given one assignment to my employee what was uh, the aptness what was the, the 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 way the the employee presented or represented the company to what extent my employee was bold whether the employee could use the presence of mind or whatever was given in writing that only he spoke out so that presence of mind is another uh, important aspect important competence which we can test by the way of direct observation and as far as the behavioral or character aspect is concerned again the direct observation of persons dealings with others get references to make inquiries you can do you can get references uh, from people and this is why most of the corporate entities nowadays they do ask for references they do they are conducting referral appointments they are appointing people through references also so my dear learners apart from technical uh, knowledge or skill all other uh, competencies they are tested by the way of observations or the recommendation of people so it is only the technical skill set where the role of subject expert is 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 very much important otherwise for all other competencies we need to observe them we need to observe our employee and then uh, test whether that competency is present or not and possibly this is the reason why most of the business enterprises or even the government organizations they have probation of 11 month period or one year period employees are put on probation in order to make a direct observation whether the employee can deal with those situations or not and accordingly you can assign the work role to your workforce so a great reliance is placed on the expert opinion as far as the technical and uh, technical competence is concerned and the overall ability of an employee is examined tested and judged by the capacity to do work which is actually considered as a functional function of technical behavioral analytical and other competencies uh, along with the strength of character so my dear learners in this way i have tried to give you a brief understanding of cotillian theory of motivation along with cotillian competencies and method of testing i hope you must have enjoyed today's lecture of mine thank you so much